everyone, and welcome to another edition of Moments with Mind Leaps. My name is Rebecca Davis, and I'm the Executive Director of Mind Leaps. And most of you know that this is my favorite part of my job. Uh, I absolutely love Fridays when I get to uh, meet, interview, spend time with some of the dancers, some of the artists from around the world um, that are working to use this art form to help their communities and have often come to Mind Leaps countries and worked with us as well. And this week, our special guest is Tracy Voigt, who holds a special place in my heart and so many of us who, who are connected to Mind Leaps um, because she's been, in most cases, one of our teachers <laughs> and also one of our, our, our early instructors in the field. Um, very influential in helping us build our curriculum, build our communities, and learn, learn how to, to connect with one another. Uh, Tracy is a principal dancer with Phil Philodenko. Uh, she had a long career with Philodenko as a dancer and then as rehearsal director after graduating from University of the Arts. And then she's gone on to teach at studios across the country in the United States, teach abroad, um, spend time at North Car uh, South Carolina School of the Arts, and um, using her talents to do very different community projects. And Mind Leaps has been fortunate enough uh, to have her in three of our countries. A uh, few American dancers that's been with Mind Leaps in Uganda, Rwanda, and Guinea in West Africa. So we are so excited to be here today with Tracy. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Tracy. How are you? You sound crystal clear. How do I sound to you? You sound fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> Well, I think it's that you're sending me extra energy. I was just telling our guests how fortunate it is that we get to speak with you. Not only have you had this cool career, but you've also been to three of the Mind Leaps countries. Uh, so we look at you as our, our colleague, but also one of our leaders. <laughs> uh, I think um, oftentimes when you and I start talking, we just start uh, you know, saying, oh, do you remember this student? Do you remember this kid? Do you remember this time? Um, and we hope to hear some of those stories from you, but, but take us back a little bit um, before all of these experiences around the world started. What, what was it that really spoke to you in your early career, in your early life about dance and the arts? I know that's been such a huge grounding force for you. Uh, share with us a, a little bit about how powerful dance has been for you. Well, you know, dance started for me at age two and a half. Um, <laughs> I, you got me beat. <laughs> hi, little girl. Super shy. I wouldn't talk to people, but I would dance in front of anyone. So uh, my mom put me in dance classes, and that's kind of how it started. And I had a lot of passion, but didn't have technique. I didn't even know what that was. Um, <laughs> high school teacher that said, you know, if you really want to do this, you're going to have to actually take ballet and I was like no no so I, I you know she got me a scholarship at a ballet studio and uh, a, a company called Philodenko came to my hometown in Erie Pennsylvania and I think I was probably 16 in a class with 11 and 12 year olds that's how bad I was <laughs> I used to just hide behind them to get across the floor um, <laughs> and they taught a master class and it was actually Kim Bears and Jay really? Joan Myers Brown sat and watched the class. And it was the first time that I was like, oh my God, I'm good at this. <laughs> and I remember it, it struck me so, I mean, it changed the course of my life. But they, Kim said, okay, so we're gonna pretend that this is an audition and let's see who will get the job. Well, in the end, I was the one who got the job. So I was like, and all those little girls were looking at me like, oh, her, really, you know? <laughs> So it actually, it changed my whole life. And then I saw the company perform and I was like, I don't know what this is because I hadn't heard of modern dance. I didn't know what it was. I was like, but this is what I need to be doing. Um, it changed me so much that after I graduated high school, I went to University of the Arts in Philadelphia to be close to Philodenko. Um, <laughs> and then I got a scholarship to go to New York. I went to a summer at Jacob's Pillow and met Milton Myers and Judith Jamison, Anna Marie Forsyth. And they said, you know, you're good enough to be at the Ailey School. Why don't you audition? So I was supposed to return to University of the Arts, but I got a scholarship at Ailey, so I packed up and moved it to New York. And so that's how, you know, it kind of all happened very quickly. 
And then, of course, I was still, you know, in my heart, I was supposed to be at Philadelphia. So I auditioned, and I didn't get in. <laughs> and so I auditioned again, and I didn't get in. <laughs> and then I went to the International Associations of Blacks and Dance in Dallas, Texas, and I auditioned again. And JB came to me, and she said, what are you, following me around the country? And I said, yeah, I am. And at the end of the audition, you know, each company would raise their hand if they were interested in you. And they all kind of raised their hand. And, you know, JB came to me in her JB way and said, you know, you must really want to be at Philadelphia. And I said, yeah, no, I'm supposed to be there. You just didn't know that. <laughs> so she, she took me in. And I finally, after three times, I got into Philadelphia. Um, and I had a 12-year career there at Philadelphia. And, you know, I, I retired once and um, <laughs> I thought I was done dancing. And then I, I went through a lot of loss. Uh, my father passed away from cancer. I had a childhood sweetheart that I was planning to marry. He passed away at 31. And so it led me right back to dance. Um, that was the thing. I, I remember calling JB and saying, oh, my God, I have to be dancing. I have to be dancing. And so that's how, it, you know, it kind of saved me in that way, because that way, you know, when you're trying to remember what the choreography is, you don't have time to think about all that sadness and, and that loss. So that's how, kind of how my journey went. And then, um, you know, again, knowing the power of that masterclass. So JB had me teach masterclasses for Philadelphia. And I just, you know, I fell in love with it because I, I was that kid that, you know, Kim Bears made that comment and it completely changed my life. So I always loved that part of the doing the, you know, the master classes. And it was hard for me to adjust to class with the same kids all the time <laughs> because I <laughs> take classes if this is the one time they get, you know. But I, I've learned how to do it. So now, now I'm in the teaching realm and, you know, and now my students are starting to teach which is, you know, crazy, because I'm only 21. I don't know how all that happened. <laughs> Tracy, this is so crazy. I, I've heard, I, I know the latter part of this story, um, but I, I never knew that your first kind of real kind of touch point or the time when it clicked for you was also a Philodenko. I just thought that you started your professional career with it. I did know that you stalked JB around the country, though. <laughs> I think that might be common knowledge now with the dance world in America. <laughs> but I also... <laughs> uh, I I think that the lesson that you've taught me and so many people is that even when something is sure in your mind, you still have to prove it to everyone else and you just still have to keep going and going and going and going. And that's one of the things that Tracy did with me when she was the rehearsal director for my former dance company. And I would turn to Tracy and be like, this isn't working. And Tracy would be like, no, we're just going to go again. <laughs> and again, and again, and again. <laughs> uh, I think what's really cool, Tracy, is like how you have felt dance in your life and then had this huge professional career, but then like had another kind of, uh, I don't know, level of reflection or, or understanding how powerful the teaching part of it is. I think like a lot of dancers end up teaching, but so many of us who've had the chance to work with you, like see you so much as like a teacher in the way that you approach students. Uh, and you commented here that it's different when you have kids all the time or if you have new kids just once. And I wonder if you can can share with us a little bit, like, how is it different than when you travel to a new country or you go to a new community in the United States, which you've done many times, and then start that whole experience again? Well, you know, it's different in that, but it's yet it's the same, you know. Um, it's easy in that one class to have that constant energy, but to continually do that. And find, I, I find now that my students teach me more than I teach them half the time. You know, technology, you know. <laughs> I've learned what a dongle is. That that's the thing you, you plug into your iPhone to go. And this is why you're my teacher. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> I learned certain movements have a name. This is called shampoo, Rebecca. Shampoo. Really? Really? Huh? <laughs> yeah, over the head and back, shampoo. Okay, um, this, this is going to go into my next curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, and finding, finding that joy and just, you know, being open and not thinking that you kind of know it all. You know, I feel like I'm constantly learning and it's constantly, you know, what I give them, they give back to me. So if I come in there 
every time excited about what I do, they have that excitement as well. I mean, I especially love to teach little kids because little kids, you can still convince them. They're like, no, lateral teeth are so cool. Coccyx balance is the best thing in the world. And they're like, yes. I mean, to see little kids, when you say, okay, are we gonna do our coccyx balance, you know, which is an abdominal thing? They're like, yes, Miss Tracy, I love those. And I love like creating that, you know, that fun and that, that you know, that not that dread of, oh no, here it comes, you know? So I kind of like that part of, of the teaching thing. <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, I mean, now like there's this kind of new body of research that's coming up about how like dance and the arts are played. And I think like dance teachers have known that from the beginning is that, you know, sure, you're working on difficult techniques. Yes, you have to take ballet class. <laughs> but there's a part of it that's like when you understand like, wow, we get to play, we get to explore both with our mind and our body, it really becomes like an art form. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why so many of the people that I see joining here uh, really like connected with you, even when you were traveling abroad for Mind Leaps. Uh, Frank, one of our first, first students ever in Uganda, Francois, who's now a teacher um, in My Leaps Uganda, Olivier, who you taught, who's also now a teacher, Bashir, uh, all of these people who you've been formative in their early years, and then they've like gr grown up inside organizations to, to give back. Uh, it, it, uh, share with us, like, I don't know if it's even a possible question, like a moment or uh, a story that sticks out from you from your time in either Guinea, West Africa, or Rwanda, or Uganda, when you've worked with lots of different communities. Well, you know, I always tell my story about Little Miss Rose. I, and I actually, I caught myself telling this new group of students that I've never taught before about Rose yesterday. <laughs> and, and Rose was um, a little girl in Uganda and she was a refugee and, you know, <laughs> every day I would say, Rose, how are you? I am tired. She would say she was tired. And I'd say, no, you're happy. And she'd just turn to me in her rose way and say, no, I am tired. And every day, every time I hear a child say, I am tired, I keep saying, no, you're happy. Well, you know, it was a, it was a miracle that we could get Rose through an entire dance class <laughs> because she would go down, sit, sit, drink water. She would never leave, but she would drink water and watch everybody else. <laughs> and then at the end of this, uh, the four weeks, I, I wanted to get a video of this because I kept telling my husband about little Rose. I was like, she is like an old woman trapped in a little body. And, and every day it was, I am tired. And she had this mean look on her face. And so I said, okay, Rose, I want to videotape you. You know, how are you feeling today? All of a sudden, Rose goes, I am happy all the time. I am happy, happy, happy. And at the very, she, very and I said, you're not what? She said, I am not tired. <laughs> so I always think of that. So when, you know, this little girl, you know, and we were outside on the concrete in the heat um and you know she would say i am tired and we would know you're happy and then by the end she was just so happy and she was not tired it was amazing to me i love that story i think more more of my students know about rose than rose could ever know <laughs> oh well maybe zanny and frank who are here will will pass on the message to rose and kampala i remember um when we were arrived on that program and you looked at like this cement with like big holes in it and then like the hot, hot blazing sun. And we're kind of like, you know, hey, Martha, where's the studio? And she's <laughs> like, you're standing in it. And you and I were like, <laughs> and I, I only knew because I was with you, Tracy, that this program would still work. <laughs> <laughs> it was a challenge, I must say, but I mean, the were so committed and you know the kids in, in the United States you have no excuses when I've taught children like that there's no excuse it was on concrete in the heat in Africa all day long <laughs> <laughs> well Tracy yeah you would be so proud of Frank and Zanny those first students who've moved on today uh so then now, now tell us I mean kind of like flipping gears from imagining Uganda and the heat and the cement to then being told now in 2020 everybody run into your home, close the door, put on your mask, sanitize forever. What has COVID and then now compounded with the social justice issues in the United States and abroad, but especially in our country and so close, I think, to you and, and our community at Mind Leaps and, and, uh, and the Philodenko community, 
uh, and now elections coming up. I mean, at some point, it's almost just like, how do we cope with all of these things? Um, and I know that dance is a part of how you're coping, but share with us a little bit about what this experience has been like for you right now in America. Well, you know, it, it's been a big change because, you know, that that's part of my life is that energy and being with those kids and to have that completely shut down and to be stuck in a house with a, you know, a little dog and a cat, you know, <laughs> was like, what? You know, and then learning how to teach on video on a carpeted floor that in about a space about that big, you know, it was a different type of challenge. But I realized that, you know, it, it kind of, I had to relearn that energy and how to motivate, yeah, because it's easy to become unmotivated in this situation. You know, I often think of, you know, the dancers coming about now and how to, do you persevere when dance isn't really a career right now? You know, it, it's, it's not really there. And, you know, it's kind of like my trip through, you know, Philodanko is that, you know, I, I didn't know if it was possible, right? But I had this in, in, in my spirit, I knew that this is the, the track I had to go. And I just kind of had faith, you know, and even time <laughs> when you shut the door on me, I still had that faith that, you know, this will, this too, you know, will come to pass. And, you know, I think about that now because, Yeah, this time will definitely come to pass. <laughs> uh, our, our side? Yay! <laughs> so, Tracy, like, so it was very dramatic. It was like, I know this time will come to pass. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, I choreographed it like that, just in case you, you hadn't noticed. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty... That. <laughs> uh, but, but catch me up. Um, yes, uh, this, this time will come to pass. And <laughs> just continuing to work and seeing the the goal that may seem so impossible will be possible again. There's no way that the arts can go away. It's the way that we express ourselves. You know, to me as a child, I couldn't express myself by speaking, but I could express it through dancing. Same thing with going through loss and losing the people that I loved. I felt the closest to them when I was dancing because I felt like they were watching me and they were with me. And I was able to tell those stories. I mean, one of the first dances I danced when I came back after that was The Widow in Sweet Otis by George Faison. And I had a whole tour of Germany for three months. And to me, it was a, gr it was a grieving thing. I mean, for, it was just me grieving that loss and being able to tell that story through dance was really powerful to me. And I felt like I was able to kind of heal myself in a way with that, you know? I think like a couple of things that you're saying here, like this idea that, you know, no matter what the situation, if it's COVID, if it's going after Philodenko, if it's something else, that you, you feel inside that like, you just, you just know that this is the path. And then like the path almost sometimes tell you like, are you sure, or you know, like, well, you know, we're, we're gonna give you an obstacle. But if you can keep that faith and like keep going, uh, I, I feel like uh, your comments are timely. I think I needed a reminder of that, that lesson even this week. But like, if you feel inside that that's right, that just, just keep, keep trying. Um, and then I think, I mean, so many of us, I think have sensed that, you know, feelings that we don't know how to um, control we can find a way through dance that we can properly process that. And I think sometimes like when I look right now at, at the world, like I wish there was more people who could find strategies like some of us have through dance to like process these things in a way that, that then help us and then don't disrupt or uh, disturb the communities around us. Uh, so, so many kind of, of those, those pieces, Tracy, that you're giving us, I think are really like appropriate right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, one, of, one of the things that, that you've mentioned, but I'd love you to kind of like uh, parse it out a little bit more for us is you, you said it like dance isn't really a career right now. And then you have like 17, 18 year olds and others who come from like different walks of life who have had that sense, but this is my path. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be doing this. And yet, like the, it's not clear anymore how you 
achieve that job as a dancer? Like, what, what are kind of the things uh, outside of COVID or within COVID that you kind of give these young artists as something to like latch on to, to, to make sense of how their training connects to opportunities? I think you have to fall in love with the process. Um, sometimes we're very goal oriented, you know, we, we want to be performing, you know, we want to do this and we want to be seen and, you know, but to fall in love with the process of learning how to express yourself as a dancer, you know, I mean, everybody, I find a lot now, they're, they're very, kids don't want to learn how to do, they want to do, you know, I said, I say to my little kids, first we learn how to dance, then we learn a dance. You know, because they say, when are we going to start the choreography? And I <laughs> yeah. when are we going to dance? I said, when we learn the performance. <laughs> Renee dance. <laughs> but, I mean, I think that's one of the things, you know, and I've had some major injuries, so I've had to learn how to walk again. So I had to kind of fall in love with that process of really understanding how my body worked and really mm -hmm. understanding technique and how to, you know, have longevity in this career, you know, and to be able to do it for a very, very long time. And it's really in the process and enjoying every moment of that. Um, I feel like, you know, I went back to dance after I left and every day to me was like I was on borrowed time. You know, I felt like this could be the last time. And I feel that we always wait for this big show to do, you know, something grand. When your big show is every moment in that studio, because look what can happen in a snap, it's all gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I learned how to enjoy that. You know, I, I, I had that with kids of, oh, when I get on stage, I'm gonna turn it on. I'm like, no, you won't. You will turn it on in here because this matters too. This is part of that process, you know, and, it, and you'll find that you actually like to dance again. You know, <laughs> you'll find that joy, you'll find that expression. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, they always say dance like no one is watching and enjoying that and feeling that. And then that, that to me, I think you have to fall in love with during these times, you know. Yes, I'm in my studio, but in my mind, I mean, I'm in my living room doing, you know, this crazy thing. But in my mind, I'm, you know, at Lincoln Center out of doors and there's 20,000 people, you know, watching. Yeah, <laughs> and using that part to kind of inspire yourself to keep going, yeah. Oh my gosh, Tracy, I mean, I think like, yeah, this idea of like falling in love with the process and not just being like, oh, I accept or appreciate yeah. the process or I know I have to do it, but like actually enjoying it. And I, I think like, I think about myself, like running Mind Leaps or other people I know who are not in dance. And it's the same thing. I mean, you're just going to burn out even under good conditions. You're going to burn out after a couple of years and then everything is lost. Uh, but when you really actually like love the challenges, you, when you realize, oh my gosh, something totally fell apart. Therefore, I'm going to learn something. Who knows what as I recover from it? Like then like every day is exciting too. It's not that redundancy or waiting for the stage. I think, oh my goodness, I think that that should be a takeaway, not for dancers, but for everyone, <laughs> everyone who is on a path, um, which is also what you're saying is like, you know, you're on a path, um, but that path is also part of the, the joy of wherever you're going. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so and now, Tracy, tell us like one thing that's coming up for you now. Um, I, I hope your answer is going to be, I am getting on a plane as soon as that's a good idea to do and going to a mind leaps country. Uh, but if that's not the answer, I will forgive you and still smile. What's one thing that's coming up on the horizon for you? Well, I'm going to go to every mind leaps country. Uh, that <laughs> um, that you know, was the right answer, Tracy. Now we're back in the studio again. You know, and we're with Mass, um, but we're, you know, we're in the studio and reconfiguring, you know, how to teach with this thing over my mouth the whole time, you know, and being able, it's kind of like being in these countries when I only speak English and nobody speaks English, you know, <laughs> that <laughs> really, not English. I can look, look a certain direction and they understand me. Um, so that's exciting. Um, I also have, you know, my modern company at Roswell Dance Theater in Atlanta. It's now grown. I now have 38 dancers in that company. There are actually three modern companies going on now. So that's oh. exciting. You know, the kids are falling in love with this modern and contemporary thing. And, 
you know, want to be doing yet, not just the ballerinas anymore, you know, understanding that this is just as strong, you know, that's cool to me. That, that is good. And I hope Abubo, who's also listening, is hearing that, that all of that is needed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I want to do the ballet in the beginning and now. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, Zanny's telling you you have to come to Uganda, and Olivier is telling you you have to come to Rwanda, and Salif's just joining so he can tell you to come to Guinea. So you've got lots of invitations, uh, and you have some very lucky dancers in Roswell um, who are getting that, that time of yours that we all appreciate so much. Tracy, thank you so much for, for taking this time with Mind Leaps. You are such a, a leader, more than a teacher. You're really a leader for so many of us who are in this field and building mind leaps. And we're just so, so grateful. Aw, thank you, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna sign off here so I can call Tracy and talk about travel plans. <laughs> to, <laughs> to all of our guests, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you.